Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Gina and today we're off to 2020. So today we are talking about my most anticipated reads for 2020, which sounds crazy. It doesn't sound like a real year, but that's fine. I'm super, super excited for these books. I've never really gotten into the hype of new books and pre-ordering books and releases unless it was for a series that I loved uh, so it was kind of fun to do all the research on Goodread and stuff. Before we get into the video though if you're new here hello my name is Gina I post on Tuesdays and Thursdays about books and travel and if you like that kind of stuff please go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below I'd love you to join our little family uh, very small right now, but hopefully growing, um, and I'd love to see more comments, likes, all that stuff. I'm totally in to talk to anybody about books. Okay, that's enough of my self-promo, and here we go into the video. Okay, so I've organized this list just in order of release date, because I think that's the easiest to, like, wrap my mind around. There's ten books that I'm super, super excited for. Some are debut novels, some are new novels, and most of them are new in series, so I'm a huge fan of fantasy, so that's why. The first book I'm going to talk about comes out February 4th of this year, 2020, and it's by Melissa de la Cruz, who you might know from the Descendants trilogy and things like that. It is The, the Queen's Assassin, and this is the first book in her new series. It's all about this guy named Calvin who is the Queen's Assassin. He's like gifted. Um, if you saw my January TBR which will be linked in the cards if you haven't, um, I'm reading Braceling. It gives me kind of those vibes like he's gifted and being an assassin but it kind of diverges from there in the fact that he is tasked with finding these missing scrolls um, about magic. And there's a second point of view, and her name is Shadow, and she is a magic wielder. But magic is illegal because these scrolls have been lost and no one trusts anything, so she has to kind of hide her powers, um, but she hopes to be as good at an assassin as Calvin is one day. So he's, she's kind of like idolizes him, which I think is a unique aspect and something that I haven't really seen in YA literature very often. Um, so I'm super excited. They come together and it's the whole it sounds like a whole bunch of hijinks I love Melissa de, de la Cruz's writing um I'm a huge Descendants fan because I'm a gigantic Disney nerd um and I love retelling so I can't wait to see where this one goes and how these two characters kind of interact and how the assassin portion kind of comes into it since that's a great moral area so my next book also comes out February 4th of 2020, and it is by Alexa Donne. Donne, I'm not really sure how to say her last name, but it is The Stars We Steal. So this book is about a princess, her name is Leo, and her family's been struggling and is in financial ruin, even though she's the princess of this starship, which is an interesting concept. They didn't think of royal lines in space. But um, she is looking for basically a rich husband to save her family and make sure um, she's kind of the breadwinner because she is the oldest daughter. And it, amidst her trying to find a love and a husband to marry her ex-boyfriend, like ex-crush, ex-guy that she knew, comes back and is determined to make her life terrible. Um, so I'm super interested to see how that goes. I love love to hate if that's what this ends up being, but I also love just like angsty teen romance. Sometimes you gotta be in the right mood for it. Um, but I'm also interested to see how the starship aspect kind of works in uh, with the royal lines and things like that, things we think of as more old fashioned in a more modern setting. So my next book comes out February 11th and it is by Kim Schmecko. I'm really not sure how to say her name. It'll be on the book cover, which I'll put right here. It's called Ink in the Blood. And I don't know much about this. I read some of the Goodreads synopsis and that's it. It is about people who have magic and they put it into tattoos and tattoos have powers. I have five tattoos. I'm obsessed with tattoos. I think they're so cool. And I, I, that's all it sold me. Like literally like three sentences that I was like, done, I'm buying it. I need that. I need it right now. I can't believe I have to wait till February 11th. 
Okay, so we're just gonna keep moving with February. There's two more left in February, I promise that's it. Um, February's gonna be a really good month. I don't know if they were recommended more because I found these on Goodreads and they come out so soon, so they're like promoting them a little bit more. I'm not really sure. But anyway, so this is called Of Curse and Kisses and it's by Sandra Manan, who is the author of When Dimple Met Rishi and From T Twinkle With Love. Um, and it comes out February 18th of 2020. It's the first book in a series and I'm super intrigued by this. It's a Beauty and the Beast retelling, which we get a lot of Beauty and the Beast retellings, but this one seems like an interesting concept. There's two people from rival families instead of like someone just kidnapping someone else. There's just a little bit different of a flavor to it. So there's two rival families and they're attending a boarding school which is so cool and one of them is a mis misanthrope so the the guy lead named emerson which i love that name emerson uh is a misanthrope so i'm super curious to see how that happens it is an actual monster part of him um which kind of brings in the beauty and the beast retelling she i've not read anything by sandra Manon. But I've heard absolutely wonderful things about Wendy Dimple Meet Rishi and all of that stuff. Um, I would love to read her writing. This appeals to me more synopsis-wise than any of her other books. Uh, so I'm super curious to check that one out. Okay, so my next book is by an author that I have been loving recently. I've read both of her books in the last uh, year and it is by Trisha Levenseller and it's called The Shadows Between Us. It comes out February 25th, 2020. And I love, she's the author of the pirate, the daughter of the pirate king and the daughter of the siren queen, both of which are amazing. I listened to both on audiobook and I loved them both. I, I really, really enjoyed it. It's very entertaining, very fast read. Um, so I'm curious to see what she does with this new concept. Basically, it's about a girl named Alessandra who is vying for the crown. She wants power. She thinks she deserves power. So she is going to marry the Shadow King who has the most power in the world and then kill him and take the power for herself, um, which is an interesting concept and kind of like evil queen, like villainy vibes, which I really... I'm not mad at. I'm super intrigued by. Um, in the end, you find out that she is not the only person looking to take this power from him. She's not the only person looking to kill him. So she has to kind of team up with the Shadow King um, and save his life, save her life, and hold the power in some way. Um, because who's who's better queen? Who's a better queen than someone that was evil and villainous? to stop the evil and villainous people that are trying to kill this king, um, which I think is just the most intriguing topic. I like villain reversal roles, um, and I'm, I'm hoping, I'm just hoping this is everything that I'm dreaming it will be. Like, I want it to be Regina from um, Once Upon a Time vibes, where it's like a redemption arc, and uh, I'm just so excited. So funny. If you're wondering why I'm looking down, I have all my notes in here because I can't keep all these dates in my head because I'm just, I can't. My brain does not work that way. <laughs> Finally, moving on from February, we're into March. And March 3rd, 2020, uh, comes out Havenfall by Sarah Holland. This is the first book in a series, and I am so excited for this series. It's about a girl that lives at an inn, which is the center of four different magical realms and it's like a sanctuary like anybody from these magical realms can go and stay there and be safe so her uncle runs this inn and she loves it she wants to be the innkeeper someday um and she ends up falling in love with this soldier from a different realm it's kind of magical realism because i think it's set in like colorado or something like that um it kind of gives me every heart of doorway kind of vibes um, and so she's, she's trying to, like, run this in, help her uncle, but her brother is accused of murder, and she knows for a fact he didn't commit it, so she's trying to save her brother as well, and there just seems to be a lot of, like, family heart-to-heart, -heart, like, connections in this, 
Uh, and there is a love romance, but it seems the romance is kind of on the back burner, which is super interesting to me. And I, I enjoy romance, but I enjoy when something else is the focus. So hopefully there's some politics. Hopefully there's a little bit of a glimpse into each of these four realms because I don't know if she can travel there. I just know that she runs the inn. So I have a lot of questions, which is always a great thing when I'm going into a book. I love to have questions so that I can get some answers. And if I don't, that's okay. But I just, I'm super in for this. My next book hit shelves on March 10th, 2020. It's by um, Catherine Purdy. And the name is Bone Crier's Moon. So this cover here. Um, and I'm intrigued by this. Now, the Goodreads synopsis was a little complicated. Didn't understand it totally. All I know for sure is that there are bone criers and they are the people that ferry the dead to where they're supposed to be. So basically the dead can still haunt the living unless these bone criers take them and put them in the correct place. And there's one character who is going to take over the matriarch of the bone criers and she has to kill her true love in order to do it or the one that's going to be her true love, I guess, which was kind of the confusing part. Like, I don't know if they know for sure or what. Um, there's a male point of view where he hates the bone criers and he wants to kill one. And then there is another girl point of view where she does not want to be a bone crier. She does not like, she doesn't have the stomach for it, um, but she's forced to be one. So I'm super intrigued how all three of these kind of point of views, I don't know if it's going to be an actual point of view or if we're just going to watch from like a narrative perspective so I'm curious to see how these kind of come in like I said I have a lot of questions and I love having questions going into books especially fantasy books so my next two books actually come out on the same day which is May 12th 2020 so the first one I found was More Than Maybe by Erin Han and this is a book about, it's more of a contemporary setting. So there's this guy named Luke. His dad's super famous punk rock star. Um, he's thought to follow in those footsteps in the music industry. And it turns out it's not really what he wants to do. He wants to write. He likes to write and to write music. And he has this podcast with his brother Cullen, who is the like, epitome of like fun loving athletic like super like it guy and so he's kind of hiding in the shadows trying to write this music when he meets this girl named Vada who is super goal oriented very focused she is going to get a music internship at Rolling Stone like she has it laid out she has a plan and she's sticking to it and she's about halfway through it and she's so excited but Luke comes along and he's not exactly in the plans, so there's definitely going to be some hijinks. Um, definitely a love story that I'm excited about. And the last official book, which again comes out May 12th, 2020, is By the Book by Amanda Sellett. And it's about a girl who loves classics. She's really into reading classic books and she writes this thing called... The Scoundrel Survival Guide. Now, the Scoundrel Survival Guide is something that basically takes all the archetypes like the Mr. Darcy and puts them into a do not fall in love with this dude, this is a bad idea, like this does not work. Now, she writes all this stuff down and she has these great ideas about these men, but turns out she can't follow them very well. So there's a bad boy involved and it seems like it's gonna be a hate to love thing. I'm a book reader, I am a writer, This, I identify with this character so much, so, so much. I am engaged now and I love my fiance, he's great, but I definitely have that bad boy face. I feel like teenage girls always have that bad boy face, whether it was it with, like, with an actual boy or with like fictional carry boy, character boys, so like um, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Raystan is my favorite, like I would die for Raystan. I am. Sarah J Mass trash specifically because she came up with Race End. So I am super excited for this book because I'm curious to see where it goes. I love Pride and Prejudice as well. I love Mr. Darcy. Sorry if the angle changed a little bit. My dog decided that was a great time to run into my tripod. But that is it for my official release date. So my official like gonna be released. Now 
if you've ever been on Goodreads, you know you get this little icon, this little guy that says nothing, like it has no title, it has no book cover, it just says like this and this, number this. So it's another one in the series. And this is my favorite series shelf right behind me. And on it is A Court of Thorns and Roses. Apparently, we are supposed to get the next installment because it's supposed to be, there's supposed to be another three books. We're supposed to get the next installment in 2020 and I'm dying for it. I need it now because I need it in my life and I'm so excited. Like I've literally read this series like three times. And then on top of that, and it's by uh, Sarah J. Mass, if you didn't know. So then there's an Allie Carter series here called High Society. There's three books in this. It is the cutest, most unique. Like I'm here for Thief and Assassins. Like those are my things. I love those. So she's coming out with a fourth book according to Goodreads and it's supposed to happen this year and I I want it. I want it so bad. I read these books so long ago and I've read them again since because I love them. So I the, the second one is Uncommon Criminals and the third one's Perfect Scoundrel and I am so ready for number four. So those are unofficial like they don't have titles. They don't have I think an official release date, I didn't see any, and they don't have a book cover, but I'm really hoping that Goodreads is not lying to me because I need them in my life and I'm so excited for them. Um, so those are some honorable mentions in my 2020 anticipated releases. Please comment down below what your favorite books, um, your most anticipated releases are, if there's any additionals in your series that you're loving right now. Um, or if you know any of these authors and you really enjoyed their other books because I'd love to get more than just the anticipated releases or maybe do a little read on before the, uh, these things are released so that I can get a little idea of these, uh, these authors and stuff like that. So that is all for my video today. Thank you so much for sticking around and I will see you in the next one. Bye!